All right, welcome back. In this section, we've been hooking up our favorite front-end solutions and seeing how they interact with Webpack. Next up are HTML templating languages like EJS, Pug, and Handlebars. They all pretty much hook up the same way. We're going to use the hookup branch as a starter for everything in this section since we won't be carrying over some of the changes into the optimizing for production section. To begin, let's git clone this GitHub repository. We're going to cd into Webpack course. Then we're going to check out hookup. Finally, we're going to npm install to get all the packages. All right, cool. Now let's start with EJS. Embedded JavaScript is the most Ruby-like syntax of all the templating languages. It's also the default for Webpack HTML plugin. Let's open up this project and we're going to create a new file. In source, let's create index.ejs. So in our webpack config, let's scroll down to the bottom and replace index.html with index.ejs. Now to get started, let's copy and paste all of index.html into index.ejs. Now let's add a variable. Up in the head, let's add title. EJS uses this syntax to evaluate variables inside the template. In this case, we're going to pass variables through Webpack. So inside the HTML plugin, you can pass a variable, like title. And back in our EJS file, let's include that with HTML Webpack plugin options title. Notice this is lowercase. You'll notice that this is one flat object. You could also pull template out as a variable, and that would give you this value. You can include as much custom stuff as you want in this one object. So let's run our development server. Let's open it in a browser. You can see that the title is brought in, links journal. Now if you'll notice, we're not parsing the image the same way the HTML loader does. Well, that's unfortunate, but there's a way around that. For instance, if we output this with a hash, we can see Webpack is now outputting a hash after the link in the image name. If we reload, we can see that it's broken because it's pointing to the original and it's not parsing the way we'd like. So how do we fix this? In EJS, there's a simple way to do it. If we include require, we can see that Webpack is once again pulling in the proper file. Now previously under the covers, Webpack was converting this to a require anyway. So this is sort of a more explicit way to require images inside your EJS. Now notice we don't have to use a loader here. That's because the HTML Webpack plugin uses EJS as a default. Now let's move on to Pug. Back in our terminal, let's create a new file, index.pug. Now let's npm install pug and the pug loader. Now inside pug, we're going to want to use the pug syntax, which is different. I'm going to quickly run through the pug syntax. So that's what our file looks like in pug. Now inside our config, let's change this to pug, and let's add a new loader. Under the HTML loader, let's say we're going to test for pug, 
and we're going to use one loader, the pug loader. All right, let's start our server back up again. And we can see we're serving pug here. All right, all we have left is handlebars. So let's get that working. Back in our terminal, let's copy source index.ejs to source index.hbs. This is a pretty quick way to just copy and paste the work we've already done. Now, the only thing to change within handlebars is the syntax that variables are expressed. So we're going to change that now. All right, looks good. Now in our webpack config, let's add another loader. We're going to use HBS. And for this, we'll use the handlebars loader. Finally, down here, let's use HBS. Now in our terminal, let's install handlebars and the handlebars loader. All right, so let's run our web server and see where we're at. We got a parse error. It doesn't seem to like our require. So let's take that out. Seems to be working now, but it's broken once again. So what do we do? Well, it turns out there's one more thing we can do in our options. In handlebars loader, we have a query. We're going to give it one option, inline requires. And this takes a regex inside of a string. All right, so now we have proper parsing of our images because of this one option, inline requires images. Now, one of the early draws of preprocessors like EGS, Pug, Handlebars, Hamel, and SAS was that because there was a necessary compile step to output the HTML needed, the compilers themselves became early runtime watchers and hot reloaders. Coupled with a live reload browser extension, much of what Webpack does on the developer experience side owes a lineage with these preprocessors. If you'd like to see what the final code would look like, check out Templates Final. Next, we'll discuss preprocessors and auto prefixers on the style sheet side.